Hi, I'm Mike. And on YouTube, you see plenty of channels dealing with lots of different sponsors. But on ours, you see a very select few. Today, we're gonna take a look at why that is, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about Beckard fencing. It's all coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back and thanks for joining us once again as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. There's nothing like fencing on a ranch. In fact, fencing technically defines a ranch and we get a chance to hang out today with some of our friends in the fencing world from Beckart Fencing. We all know this guy, this guy is <laughs> Keith somebody, don't, yeah. don't remember his name, and his dad, Steve, uh, <laughs> here hanging out with us today. Thanks guys for coming and, and hanging out and, and, and actually putting in a lot of work yeah, in this it. whole process. It's great to be here. This field over here, actually, uh, we're gonna end up grazing because we didn't uh, we didn't get a chance to hay it this year. And I remember I got a hold of uh, Beckart and I said, hey, uh, can I get a discount on some fence? You know, we work together, why not? You know, throw me a 10% throw discount or something. And about three hours later, I got a call from Keith and he said, uh, you know, we're going to be up in that area anyway, a couple shindigs we got to go to and, and why don't we just come up and, and put in some fence. Sure. And uh, so not only do I get a discount on the fence, I also get a discount on labor. On the labor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it worked out well. So I thought I'd come up, uh, I know I'm kind of slowing you guys down, but I wanted to come up and take a look at what you're doing and uh, some of the new toys that you brought with you. We brought some new toys. That's for sure. And uh, we start here with a typical, well, not really a typical H uh, that you would see on any fence. Right. So, you know, you talk to us a lot about uh, about the drought that you guys are in. So, you know, the last time I was here, I caught the field on fire a couple times right at my feet. So I knew this was going to be rough. So uh, we contacted a guy we do down in Oklahoma and we have built our Beckhart Homestead brace using these fence bullets. And it's just a, and we've painted them. They come galvanized, but it's just a bolt together system and it worked out really nice. Uh, this was the first time for me and Steve to build this brace, and it probably took us, the first one probably took us about 10 minutes, and we got it lined out, and I think probably the one on the hill probably took us five minutes. Wow. So it, you just bolt the band together, and then the sleeve slides over, and you bolt the sleeve up, and I mean, you can see we've got a, we've got a nice brace. I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere. And this would be the HN style. So you've got a standard H brace with an N style kicker. And what exactly, what exactly does that do for you? So what that does is gives you three contact points in the ground plus the angle. So it will stop it from ever sagging. So we're using the Beckart Cattleman, which is one of the, one of, if not the strongest barbed wire on the market. And this product will withstand the snow load. So let's just say you guys get a drift in here off of one of the hills or something like that, and it puts a lot of pressure on this wire, it won't pull these braces over and make them slack just simply because of the angle. The angle holds the strain very well. Nice. Steve, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I just had my 20th anniversary with Beckhart on September 1st. I've been in the industry a little over 30 years. And uh, really when I first started out, it was in the very beginning of high tensile. Uh, I covered the eastern part of the United States, east of the Mississippi River. And high tensile wire really took off in the east a lot sooner than it did in the west. A lot of smooth wire, electric fence, things like that out uh -huh. there. And uh, of course we've developed the, the barbed wire over the years. And uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about being Beckhart was uh, innovation. And the 14 gauge barbed wire actually was a Beckhart innovation that uh, we came up with one day in a meeting in Marietta, Georgia of all places. Oh my gosh. And, uh, so it was kind of a, a beginning from our 15 and a half gauge high tensile. And uh, it, it works really well. And like he said, it's one of the strongest barbed wires you can uh, get on the market. And it just, uh, it works so well. And Couple that with some of our woven wire fences, and you've got fence that'll last you for generations. Awesome. Out here, so, <laughs> just to be uh, just to be clear, you're not Keith's dad. No, I'm not Keith's dad. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's been uh, called that more times than this one. This isn't the first time. Oh my gosh. So you guys are, uh, you guys got one strand up on the bottom. Now is that the bottom strand? Yeah, it is. So why do, you why do you start on the bottom? So that was our strainer. Okay. Our, our stringer line. Um, you know, the guys from, uh, the guys from Ski Drill hooked us up with a, ri a rig mount post driver that really helped us. Uh, you know, the last time I was here, you and I did that repair and mm -hmm. we used the Ski Drill 
uh, T-post driver with the the pipe adapters and it, it really was hard when we got down a little ways and you told me you guys have a lot of sandstone here mm -hmm. that rig mount just just powered through it so it really helped us so what we did is we set this corner post and we set the corner post way up on the other side of the hill and then we pulled along the bottom so we didn't pull our post over okay and then that gave us the straight line to run along with your survey marks to get up on the hill and over the hill so we get a good straight line and and you can tell it it's worked out really good i mean the post just track right up the hill and very nice go. so we've done uh now two videos with keith and I hate to say it, Steve, but everybody says how Keith is a is a pro, and he knows all there is about fencing. But I, I think you, would, you know. I was waiting for it. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> like I said, we're using the Cattleman Pro two point. Um, I called Mike, and this is what he wanted to use uh, on the last video. You guys saw. I, me I use honestly, the I said just just bring whatever you want. <laughs> we you saw me use the gripples, so there is one for barbed wire, and that's what we're going to do. And uh, we're marked up here on the post for a 52 inch fence. Uh, that's real common throughout the throughout the U.S. Um, you guys are just a little bit shorter, but somewhere in that 48 to 52 range is usually where you see. So we're at 12, 10, 10, 10 to come up to 52 inches. So again, we do a we do a double wrap, and a lot of snow, a lot of wind. So we do this double wrap to keep it from wearing. And what we're going to do is just square it up. Get the length that I need. Match that up where the gripple will catch. So, put the T-gripple on. I guess we can still call it a T-gripple. Then pass it through. And then, like I said before, is most of the time, I will pull it through and just bend it over to get it out of my way. So when we start pulling, all this will tighten up. We'll be ready to go. Nice. So I noticed you guys have um, your posts in, your, but you don't have any T posts in yet. Not yet. So where does that come in the equation? Are you are you gonna do you run all the fence and then do the T posts? Or are you gonna use the the stringer for your T posts? How so does that work? A lot of people will do one stringer and then they'll come in and they'll put their lines and they'll put their T posts. So this morning what we're gonna do is we're gonna run two, and since we have such a steep hill to go up and over. We're actually gonna use the high speed pipe clips that we showed earlier, and we're gonna run our contour first. And we want to, to be sure both those wires look good going over the hill. And then when we come in and set our T-posts, that gives us a good, a good place to put the T-posts and make sure that you're good and square, gotcha. upright. You don't have T-posts leaning out that you're sitting there bending and then you're just wallering out your dirt hole. Mm -hmm. you know? So that gives you a good way to keep your T-posts good and straight. Awesome. So here's a dumb question. When you come up over a hill like this, uh -huh. would it be beneficial to do like another H at the top of the hill? Or is it just, is this just not enough of a hill to really have to worry about that? Well, one of the things that I find with a lot of fencing is it's over braced. Mm. You know, braces have really 
only one reason that we put a brace in there, and that's the pull on it. Okay. So, when we make an elevation change, we can do that with a post. Gotcha. We don't really need to use a brace. Just like people put bends in, you know, put braces in there, or, and the only thing, the only pressure is coming to the side of that. Mm -hmm. So the posts are all you need. Right. I think one of the, the the things that people get confused about with fencing is that posts are actually holding the fence. They're just holding it up. Right. Exactly. You're, you're keeping your strand spacing. That's the only thing that post is really there for. Yep. The brace is what you pull. I mean, we can pull 1,320 feet of this wire on mm -hmm. two braces, one on each end. That's mm -hmm. it. So, uh, a lot of times when we're fencing, it's interesting to bring up the top of the hill. Two things that I always try to make sure people understand is at the top of every rise and the bottom of every dip, you need to have a post mm -hmm. because that's what gets your flow. Then when we tie it off, we'll staple the high points first or clip them in this case, and then we'll pull down into the dip. Gotcha. And that way the wire gets the flow and everything else just kind of naturally lines up as, as we go along. That makes sense. Now, another thing that I get a question about quite a bit is T-posts. Um, if you're doing wooden posts or metal posts in this in this instance, uh, is there is there a standard distance for T-posts to metal posts, you know, three to one, four to one, a mile to one? I mean... Uh, with woven wires, it'll vary a little bit. With the fixed knot wire, like we put down there uh, by the corral, uh, we could go four to one ratio. Okay. Wood, to, wood or steel to T-post. With barbed wire, it varies a little bit. We can go basically 100 feet okay. or a little bit more, and we can use a 15-foot post center and not worry about putting any uh, anything but the T-post in there. Or we can go a little bit further and then put a stay. And the only reason it stays in there is just basically to keep it from being pulled apart. Okay. Uh, smooth wire uh, fences, a lot of it's built on 20 foot centers. We can go up to 30 and the same thing, we'll put a, they call it a batten, and it's either a plastic or eucalyptus non-conductive so that the wires don't short out against each other. Gotcha, so did you guys so measure four to out? One, five to one is kind of the. Did you guys measure out these posts or is it just, are you guys good enough just to eyeball this stuff? Uh, we actually, all the stuff on the flat terrain, we, we stepped it off. They're okay. at about 100 to 150 feet. But uh, on the hill, no, we, we marked our high points and we marked our low points. And even if we were, I think in, in one instance, we were only like 80 feet, yeah. but we had such a terrain change that we had to, we had to do that. We wanna make the barbed wire blend to the hill. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're, we're gonna set up on 52 inches. But when we get down there, if it makes a real drastic change, we're just gonna kinda let it flow with the land so it looks a lot better. Gotcha, gotcha, because the cows care about that kind of thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, your neighbor down there might, but he Maybe. came and saw us. He, he really liked the fence. So. Did he really? Well, yeah, because he ain't paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to kind of use the same tools we used in the last videos. Um, the gripples are mainly what we're, what we're using for splicing was a little bit, a little bit different than the mediums that we used last time. But we're just hooked up with another, another, uh, another strainer, another wire puller. And what's really great about this Cattleman Pro is no stretching. So I mean, you can see this is this is basically an eight foot cross member or or top rail. So I'm hooked up right at eight feet. So I'm not going to use near all of that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to stretch it. We're just going to tighten it up. And uh, just I'm already set up. We're ready to go. We're pretty close to the post down through there. It unrolled pretty nice. So yeah, I missed one spot out in the middle. There. And we're just going to start watching for the wire to to lift up like it did before. So we've got really good, nice tension. I mean, you can see it's coming off the ground for quite a ways. So, nice. so it's good and tight and nice. And this you'll be able to pull down into the dips mm -hmm. and everything without having to worry about it being overstretched. Yep. Yeah. And, and that is the one thing you were at when we were talking about the dips and rises and things like that. Uh, if you've got a lot of roll to that terrain, we generally won't make it quite as tight because every time we pull that up or pull it down, we add a little bit more tension. You're not stretching, you know, six feet out of this fence. Right. So, I mean, that's the nice thing. You're not, you're saving yourself all that time um, well, of having to stretch this. You can tell where we set up. 
I, I said something about where we set up at eight foot. So okay, here I we go. Yeah, took, I haven't even took half. Mm -hmm. and, inches. and we're over a thousand feet. Yeah, yeah, way over a thousand. So and, and so and on on a on a standard uh, fence wire like this kind of fence wire, this kind of barbed wire. How much do you think you would stretch out of this stuff? Well, the difference between if it wasn't tessel, you know hundred years old. Well, high tensile <laughs> like the Cattleman barbed wire has about three percent, little between three and four percent elongation. Your low carbon barbed wire has between eleven and thirteen. Oh wow! So on a thirteen hundred twenty foot roll at 11 percent elongation you're looking at almost 1500 feet or 150 feet excuse me of stretch mm -hmm. in that wire so one of the things that we always do try to also kind of explain to people is with high tensile we don't really stretch the wire we tension it mm -hmm. and there's there's a difference with with low carbon wire whether it's field fence or barbed wire it literally stretches as you tension it it, it, to get it tight where with this we just pull it up till it's tight and it'll stay there wow so are you a bit of difference are you finding it it's a there's a there's a learning curve to this obviously as people switch from low carbon to the to the high tensile um is it a is it a is it a hard learning curve for, for you guys on your end of things i mean <laughs> you laugh we struggled for several <laughs> years out here so so yeah yeah and we still and and quite honestly i, I was thinking a slightly different and keith and i had this conversation yesterday we still have a lot of fencers who just want to have that thing so tight and we can't we can't get through to them that it doesn't have to be that tight you know we're not trying to shoot an arrow to the moon mm -hmm. we're trying to get a nice tension fence and with high tensile the, the unique thing about high tensile going back to that elongation is it actually will give with an animal impact and then spring back you don't get that that sag in a fence like you do with the low carbon well, once you pull it as tight as some of these guys are pulling it, you've reached that point where even a high tensile wire is going to start to elongate. Right. And so at we, that point, we, you we start struggle. to break the grain structure. Yeah. Well, and then something hits it, and then it's and then it's just snapping. Right. Snap. So one thing I always like to tell people is, first of all, any fence that I put up is basically a suggestion to a cow. <laughs> if, if if they want to go through, I don't care what kind of fence it is, they'll figure out how to get through it. So uh, you, you, rather than killing yourself getting as tight as possible, you know, if you if you don't, if like you said, like if if a cow hits it, yeah. and it's and it's too tight, it snaps. Yeah. So you you got to have that middle ground. And with high tensile, particularly more in a, in a high tensile woven wire fence. If you so, we understand that not everyone is going to use gripples, and you know, oh, I you're going to show some old school stuff. Yeah, I'll show you some old school. Wait so a minute. Last time you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't you be the old school guy? Yeah, he taught me. I want to see if he learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we're up at our other mark. So I did the same type of double wrap. So we've got two friction points, so it's not going to turn loose. And then you just, I did my double wrap. I'm coming from under. And now I'm gonna wind up bleeding like Steve if I'm not careful. And then just go over and across that barb and then go just a couple more times. And then I'll just finish out. All right, so this is a pipe clip. And basically it goes around the pipe, our barbed wire will be in there. We squeeze it together. And then this chuck goes over the end of it. It'll be hooked to a drill and we just spin it and it ties it off. Pull that together. That's it. Bang. That's it. All right. So you guys are going to do this all the way down. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to come back and start putting in T-posts. Mm -hmm. And then I do have one request that we have to do before the end of the video. Okay. And that is somebody asked me to have you demonstrate the best way to get through barbed wire once <laughs> it's put up. <laughs> called a gate <laughs> <laughs> I've got long legs I can barely get over that one <laughs> Of 
mine will be found in the mountains where I'm born and raised. I paid my duty, it's the sunny side cutie. Oh Lord, hear the sorrow in my heart. I rode my body up the mountain to a place where I can sit in my rocking chair. Rode my body up the mountain. Keith, this looks like a fence. It's starting to look like a fence, Mike. That's nice. Everything's kind of falling into place now. We got the layout, you know, we got the layout good and it's all coming together. Awesome. Well, we're gonna wrap things up here from the side of our field. Uh, another strand to go and, and you're pretty much done. We're done. Now I wanted to, you know, the, the, the main point of this video that we wanted to make was the fact that the people that we work with, you know, that, that we work with as sponsors and partners right. and stuff like they, they these are people that are in, they're almost like they're they're ranching with us, yeah. right? Like, I mean, we call for help, you guys are right there. I wanted to give you guys the breakdown really quick of what you guys did here over the last couple days. And so this field, which is about 160 acres, okay. is gonna feed the cows for about 15 days. That's it. Wow. But that doesn't sound like much, but in the in the course of things, that 15 days saves the ranch $4,000. That's awesome. So I, I thank you guys for that. Absolutely. I mean, there's no We're way that uh, we can, well, I'll take you out to dinner. <laughs> How about you shake my hand? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys, we appreciate it. I'll oh, let you get back well. to work, but uh, I, I appreciate having partners like you guys and Beckart and everybody, not only you guys here, but everybody back at the office, at the corporate office, uh, at, back in Arkansas, wherever they may be. I mean, everybody that came together to make this happen. It's just amazing and, and it really does uh, humble Aaron and I and I appreciate you guys. Y'all are good people, we enjoy it. Thank you. Glad to be here, Glad looking to be. forward to it again. Awesome, now <laughs> get back to work. All right. <laughs> That's amazing that uh, we have people that are behind us, uh, and you know I could be I could be hawking shamwows. I could be uh, the newest, greatest uh, ab blaster. I could be hawking that, uh, but I'm not hawking anything. The only thing that I'm really hawking is having a connection to those that want to help you. And you know there's lots of lots of companies out there, and it's amazing when you can find one that's. Uh, right up your alley. And I, I do truly believe that Beckart is one of those companies. So if you're looking for fence, I'm gonna say give them a try because it's gonna be worth it. Thanks guys for coming along with us once again as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. The cows, still about six miles that way. But before the snow flies, they'll be able to enjoy this field. Thanks to that fence and Beckart. Thanks to you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. <laughs>